When I was in practice for the first 10 years or so, it was fairly straightforward. So you knew uh, when you, if you were a man and when you turned 45, you got a digital rectal exam, you got a prostate specific antigen, you got a PSA, and you did that every one to three years. Uh, and then in 2012, the US Preventive Services Task Force, which is one of the major um, specialty societies that, that, that puts out guidance for, for screening and stuff like that, they completely changed the game. They came out and said that they recommended against routine screening of anyone. Um, and that was a big deal. And, and the reason that they did that is there's, there's actually a lot of evidence that screening with PSA leads to a lot of what we call overdiagnosis. So we make a diagnosis of a cancer that's unlikely to ever cause you any problem. Uh, and it doesn't improve your prostate cancer specific mortality. So in other words, you come into my office, I test a PSA, it's positive. Now I've made you worry that you have cancer. Um, and that leads us down a road where I do a lot of tests that cause a lot of problems for you. And at the end of the day, I'm using that phrase a lot, you would not have died from that prostate cancer. So, so now we don't routinely screen anyone according to those guidelines, and that's a huge change. For prostate cancer, it's huge because you can't just test like you used to. So now I have to have the conversation with the patient. Here's the risks of the test. Here's what may happen if I do the test. Um, and, but I can't tell you without doing the test for certain that you don't have cancer. And so now it becomes, what can you live with? Um, some patients will say, ignorance is bliss. I don't want to know. If you're telling me it's unlikely to kill me anyway, I want to just, I don't even want to pursue it. I've had other patients that they can't sleep at night if there's that chance that they have prostate cancer. And so for them, yeah, you discuss it with them and you end up doing the screening. But as long as it's informed, they understand, you know, if, if, if it's positive, here's what we do. Here's what happens if you get a biopsy. Here's what happens if you get treatment. As long as they have that informed consent, then that's fine. But it really comes down to patient preference. The issue with especially a lot of screening is that the, the recommendation that you read depends on who's writing the guidelines. So if, if I'm a cancer society, um, I'm going to recommend screening because that's what I do. Uh, versus if you are, you know, maybe a family practice society, you may not recommend screening. You may follow the U.S. Preventive Services Task Force. So, so I think where MCG is really helpful, and, and this is not just for prostate cancer screening, but, you know, colorectal cancer screening, mammography, um, is we consolidate the available evidence. Um, we present it in an unbiased way. We present it in a transparent way. Um, and then, you know, we make what we think are the best recommendations based on that evidence.